the roadies here are excellent. Thank you so much. So, if a tree falls in a forest, does it make a sound if no one's there to hear it? Obviously, the answer to that question is yes. I'm kind of tired of that question. I don't know much, but I know how physics works. But I do quite like the kind of poetic, existential metaphor of the whole thing. It's very theory of knowledge. Now, some of my students complain to me about theory of knowledge, but I don't really know why. It makes you a more interesting person, and my goodness, your generation needs that. But I'm not here to talk to you about that today. What I want to talk to you about is a story of inertia and how I overcame it. Most of you will know me as a teacher, but in my spare time, which I create by not working very hard at my job, I like to write songs to hopefully entertain myself and other people if they happen to hear them. And this story, I don't really know when it starts, but it finishes last year in the Coca-Cola Arena in Dubai in the car park after graduation. And I'll tell you more about that later on. So, where does it begin? Well, it begins, roughly speaking, in January of 2010 in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, if you'll cast your minds back. In a little house somewhere in Red House Farm, an English teacher is struggling with his job. He is not enjoying it, and he's been talking to his girlfriend about how he feels he has to leave teaching as a profession because it's making him so miserable. And so the plan is in place to quit the profession and find something else to do. And I decide, I'm going to stop with the he thing. It's me, clearly. This is me, this teacher I'm talking about. And I was having a difficult time. And I thought what I could do is go to get therapy or counselling. I'd heard it was good for people. I found it very helpful. But what I really was hoping was that, as a lot of young men do, I could tell this person that I was paying that it was everybody else's fault and I would be totally free from blame. Turns out that might not have been entirely true. I thought it might cost me my job. I thought it might cost me my friends. I thought it might cost me my family. I thought it might cost me my relationship. And it turned out that I had to do a lot of work on myself. Now, that kind of sucks. That starts its own inertia because you have to sit there, you have to realize what's wrong with you, and then you have to do something about it. And that's, it's easier just to sit on the sofa and hope that things will get better by themselves. They won't. So, inertia had set in. But good news for this English teacher, the weather in the north of England is very cold. And this week, the pipes at school have burst, and there's... Uh, water everywhere, so school is going to be closed for a few days, so I don't have to go to work. Brilliant. So I decided I'll do what I do. I'll write a song. And it's going to be an epic song, an epic voyage of emotional roller coastery, where I discuss how awful and angsty and stressful life is. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to start with classical music, and I'm going to borrow from as many different places as I can. Because Paul McCartney, a personal hero of mine, once said, a good artist borrows, a great artist steals. He also said, na, 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 hey, Jude. So we don't have to listen to everything he said necessarily, but I've always liked that quotation. So I started where I would start with classical music. This is going to be an epic song, like Elton John's Indian Sunset or Led Zeppelin's, I don't know, pick whatever Led Zeppelin song you want. They're all 20 minutes long. And I will find something operatic. And I've been listening to a prelude by Chopin in C minor, which starts like this. <laughs> Very dark, very gothic. So I thought, well, this is a good place to start. So what am I going to write about? Well, I had a small fragment of melody, and the reason was I'd been playing a lot of Beatles songs on the piano, and one of them begins like this. And I thought, hmm, this is, this is a good start. Uh, but it feels quite cheery if I put it in major key. So if I invert it and put it in minor key, it will be much more grand. But I had to play it in C minor because I'm not a very good pianist, so I have to play everything in C. So I now had my melody. Tried to write some lyrics. They don't necessarily come easy, but what I ended up with was I wanted to be honest, and I wanted to be open, because apparently that's what you do in songwriting. So I ended up with... I've been feeling so down lately I can't see the new ground for me I can't fix the problems I caused Now the problem with that is it's depressing and it's not very good. So inertia sets in, what do you do then? Well, I couldn't really think of anything. I played around with chords for ages and nothing was coming, no words were coming. But I like that, I like the puzzle, I figured there's a puzzle to solve. And at some point I changed this chord into C major which is much happier. And I thought, okay, C major chords. There are, there are chord sequences I can employ here. Not the four chord sequence that you all know. 
because if you do that, you just end up with the same song over and over and over again. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Can you feel the love tonight? Take on me, take me on, but I won't hesitate no more. Pretty, pretty breeze, don't you ever, ever feel? Take me home, country. So, somebody's written that song already. I don't need to do that. But what could I do? Well, what I figured is I might change my mind about angst. Actually, things were going kind of well. I'd gone to my therapy. I was starting to figure out what the problems were. I figured I had something I could work on. I felt like the things were moving in the right direction, so I wanted to change my mode into a more kinetic kind of song about momentum. And I'm in C major now, so it's a little bit more happy, and I thought, well, I'll borrow from another one of my heroes, John Lennon. His song, Starting Over, begins like this. Which is nice, because this fifth note of the chord raises, which gives you a bit of tension, which is what you like. But I didn't want the bass to be all on the same note, because that's kind of boring, and I wanted some momentum. So I found my chords by playing around for a little while, and eventually came up with this. Okay, eight bars in, not bad, but I don't like this minor chord. Still a bit depressing. It resolves to a C quite nicely, but I, there was something else I could do. So I start, uh, borrowed a chord from the Disney Corporation, and it goes like this. It's basically the same chord with a different bass note, and you find it in the I Want songs in Disney films, for example. And it resolves really nicely to C, so that's going to be my chord. So, there we go. I've got my chord sequence, I've got an idea of the melody, which is now more kinetic because it's in a major key, so it's now... which is much more cheery. And so from that, I thought I was ready to go. The problem is, I wanted to create momentum, and momentum on a piano is very difficult. It's not a very movable instrument, obviously, you can't walk around with it. And if you're very, very good, I'm sure you can do it, but you know, I'm not necessarily. I also wanted to use a walking bass, largely because I'm a huge rock and roll fan, but the walking bass is something that J.S. Bach invented with his harpsichord. He was very good at it, but then he was J.S. Bach, and I'm just me. So if you don't know what a walking bass is, if you've ever heard rock and roll songs, it's the bit that goes... And I wanted to use that, but I can't play it on the piano very well, as just evidenced by my demonstration. So I thought, well, what I'll have to do is move to my other old friend, the guitar. Here's one I prepared earlier. The chords are fairly straightforward, so I figured, well, I can convert them quite easily, and that will be just fine. Oh, sorry. And so I went to begin singing my little melody. No, 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 it's too low, far too low. Let's just put it up an octave. No, 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 no. I don't want to sing like that. So, thanks to this wonderful invention, the capo, I can place it anywhere I want on the guitar and I don't even have to learn new chords. And now I have this, which has a much more kind of twangy country and western kind of feel to it. And I like that country and western feel, even though most of the songs are about marital infidelity and dead dogs. Actually, I feel it's quite a chirpy subject, quite a chirpy genre. Now, people will tell you that this is the hand that makes you a good guitarist. It's what you play your solos with, but it's not. This is the hand that makes you a good guitarist, because if you can't play properly, you just get a lot of this. Nobody wants to hear that. I'd been listening to a lot of solo Beatles work, and I'd been listening to a song by Paul McCartney called Heart of the Country, in which the picking pattern goes like this. And I really liked it. And also, a lot of the same chords were used, because I was borrowing them from him. So I thought, well, I've got my picking pattern. And now my song is coming together. So where's my walking bass line? The problem with the walking bass line is my bass guitar was broken. Inertia sets in again. I'd ordered a new bass guitar that I was very excited about, and it had come in the post off the back of a lorry somewhere, and the neck had got warped, so I couldn't play it. So, with my limited experience of playing a bass guitar, it probably wouldn't have been the best bass line ever anyway, so I decided to just write it on the guitar and then drop it down an octave in post-production, which you can do. It doesn't sound great, but it sounds kind of homemade, which is what I was looking for. And actually, because of that, I ended up being, being able to write something a bit more um, kinetic because the bass line is always moving. For every beat of the bar, there's two different notes in the bass line, which means you always feel like you're moving forward, which is kind of the, the point of the song. So, what do I do about lyrics? Well, 
as you've probably worked out by now, I'm pretty much the world's most alpha bro. So I don't like talking about my feelings because it's super emotional. So what would happen is when people would say to me, hey, how are you doing? What are you working on at the moment? I would kind of try and play it down. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying some things out. I'm just, I'm just messing around a little bit. I'm just kind of, you know, just playing, playing around and trying to like minimize the situation. I realized I've been messing around a bit, actually fits the syllable count that I need exactly, and the melody quite nicely as well. Also handy because loads of things rhyme with around. And so you've got a lot of opportunity then to write the rest of your song. In fact, if you are thinking about being a songwriter, I would recommend if you want to write songs for a person, make sure you date somebody whose name rhymes with a lot of things. If you are dating, say, a Julie, then truly your newly found love will be unduly cruel if she treats you coolly. And if you're da dating somebody called Gerald, I, I don't have anything for you there at all. So I have my first verse, and I've managed to include the line, I've been trying to fix myself, baby. Baby is a bit of a throwaway word, but it means at least I'm addressing my girlfriend and making sure that she knows that I'm trying to be an active part of my own recovery. And also, it makes it seem a little bit more serious, and then it also gives me the chance to end the next verse with, there's light in the tunnel now, maybe, because baby also rhymes with lots of things. Get to the middle eight. Now, Guns N' Roses, who you may know, there's a section in their song, Sweet Child of Mine, where Axl Rose sings, where do we go, where do we go now? It seems very philosophical, but actually he's singing it in the studio to the band because he hadn't written the lyrics for that section and was asking them, where do we go, where do we go now? Good enough for them, good enough for me. So I put in a couple of phrases of where do we go, where do we go from here, which also makes me sound kind of philosophical, like I'm really thinking about the future, but actually was because I couldn't think of any good lyrics. What if you put a guitar solo in, because I also couldn't think of any more lyrics, you repeat the last verse, and then you finish with a little slide to finish your song. So, the song is there. This is about two days of sitting around trying to overcome this particular puzzle. Once you've got the idea, it's hard to let go of it, but you have to kind of refine it. And then I released it to little fanfare, which is fine. I, I, I knew that hardly anybody would hear it. People release new music onto streaming services all the time, and some teacher from Newcastle is not going to have a huge audience. That's totally fine. Um, I didn't mind. I, it, was really, it was pushing a tree down in a forest with nobody there to hear it, but it was fine. Because what I'd liked was the process. Now, you might be able to tell from this talk that I'm a little bit of a geek. And what I like is the process itself. I've done a lot of things in my life, but I've never had an experience that hasn't convinced me that hard work can be its own reward. The song languished on streaming services for about 10, 11 years, really nobody listening to it, and I didn't mind at all. I'd had so much fun making it that really whether or not anybody heard it was irrelevant to me. I found out that this was my true mindset change, to quote Jude's talk earlier, later on in my life when I worked on an album in China for about three months, and on the last day of mixing, uh, the whole motherboard of the computer melted and I lost everything. And I thought I would explode with anger and resentment for the universe treating me so unfairly, but I actually didn't mind. I'd had so much fun making the thing that whether or not anybody else heard it kind of didn't matter to me. And so I moved to Dubai eventually, and eventually, as sometimes happens, the students discovered that they could find some of my music online, and they'd listen to some of it. And for whatever reason, they chose this song as a song that they really liked. I don't know why. It's not my favorite song I've ever written. It's not the most musically complicated. It's not the most lyrically complicated. It's only 100 seconds long, so it's certainly not the longest. It's not even the shortest. It's not really the most anything, but for whatever reason, they seem to like it, and after graduation last year at the Coca-Cola Arena in Dubai, in the car park after the ceremony, three of my students walked up to me and sang my own song to me and told me they really loved it. And that was a strangely wonderful feeling because there's no way that 28-year-old could have known what the next 12 years would bring. Okay? Four different schools in three different continents, marriage, so promotion, demotion, some good songs, some not so good. And I certainly wasn't writing that song so that three kids who were four years old at the time would one day come up and sing it to me in a car park in Dubai. I don't think I would have believed that if you told me at the time. No, I did it because I have a hatred of being bored and I wanted to occupy myself. So it was great fun, it brought me great joy, and I think great joy and creativity and passion is what you need. Find something you can do and you can love. We've got enough bored, rich people in the world. Don't do it for money, we've already got those people. Do it because it brings you joy. And you never know, you throw something out into the world and 12 years later, a different version of you sees the impact it had. I don't know what will happen. In 2035, 12 years from now, maybe somebody will stumble upon something you threw out into the world and maybe they will like it. But if it brought you the pleasure, that's all the reward you'll ever need. My tree fell in a forest and didn't make a sound for over a decade, but when it finally did, what a lovely sound it was. Thank you. <laughs>